Let's look at rendering a geometry multiple times. I'm going to place the cube into the world, move the cube out in front of the camera, slide the cube uh, down the negative x direction. Let's rotate the cube around the x so we can get something similar to what we've done in our own code, except the near plane's too far out. And the far plane actually has to be out further. But there we go. We've, we're seeing a rotated cube. That's the top of the cube. Go back to our original view here. Actually, that aspect ratio is kind of hideous, isn't it? That's that's more a cube. There we go. Anyway, uh, let's let's throw another geometry into the scene. Remember, I had this as sphere, but other than I changed it to cube a couple of videos ago. So it actually brings in a cube. Let's as well move that in front of the camera. Uh, translate it in the positive x direction and we'll just rotate this one around the y so that we can see that nice purplish side there of the cube and let's look at what the camera sees yeah looking pretty good maybe we can rotate a little more there we go I like that that looks more interesting it's like this cube is coming out at our face a little bit better. I want to render this scene in our code, in our OpenGL code, so we can do something a little more interesting. Now we have a few options. Okay, if you recall, we sent some, well, let's go back to our original code over here. We had this send shape data to OpenGL, and we created this cube. All right, we, and remember, make cube, it, it instantiates an array of vectors or vertices, and it also creates some indices. And then we send that data to OpenGL. We'll say this is the OpenGL wall. We send that data using buffer data calls. And OpenGL hopefully puts that data onto the graphics hardware RAM. We'll say this is the graphics RAM. So OpenGL copies our data from our quote unquote client side RAM down to the graphics card RAM. And then later inside of PaintGL, we actually render it but after we're done sending it down to the hardware we say hey clean up which removes our client side RAM we no longer need a copy of it because OpenGL stored the copy on the graphics card and then later we render that cube to the screen uh, now if I want to draw two cubes I could certainly do the same process again create all these vertices create all these indices copy them down again waste room on my graphics card and essentially I'll have two copies of the exact same thing and when I draw one I'll draw this one and when I draw the second one I'll draw this one not ideal okay complete waste what we want to do is use the one copy of the cube and render it multiple times this is called instancing our data so we have one geometry but then several instances of our data and basically what I mean by instancing is hey we'll draw the cube but with a different matrix transformation and we've seen in previous videos how we can render the color buffer multiple times and we draw over the color buffer and that sort of thing I had those red triangles moving across the screen anyway I want to use the cube data once I don't want to create it twice but I want to render that cube in multiple locations also in a previous video I showed you how we make a perspective matrix by calling perspective and sending in these parameters you should be comfortable with and then we take that matrix and we slam it into translate and then we take that result and slam it into rotate and the whole reason why we're passing the matrix as we go is to optimize a little bit so we don't have to, we can multiply while we create new matrices but I actually think that's kinda of hard to digest as a learner so I notice there's another include from GLM I can have here GLM uh, GTX is it uh, transform dot HPP control minus to go back to where we were at and now I don't have to pass in this matrix even though it's more ideal to pass in a matrix and build a matrix and multiply matrix as we're building a matrix I'll say that ten times even though that's more optimal I think as a learner that's hard so I'm actually going to take that out and just create the matrices individually so now this is rotation matrix because it's the result of our rotate this is a translation matrix which is the result of our translate and then we have projection matrix so then our full transform matrix will be mate for full transform matrix is projection times translation times 
rotation, and I should probably put matrix at the end of these. Control space to get it to do that for us. Now we have the same result. We're just creating it less optimally, but I think this is easier to read. We have the rotation matrix, translation matrix, projection matrix, control F5. Let's verify we get the exact same result that we got before, and we do. Very good. Yeah, let me draw our cube as it currently exists. This is our cube vertex data and index data. I'm drawing it in 3D because 3D pictures are more fun, I think, and plus it shows I have a little bit of art skill, not just programming skill. And then looking at this, we send this cube data, each vertex through a rotation matrix, and once the rotation matrix is done, then we send it through a translation matrix, then we send it through a projection matrix. Now you know we're doing that all at the same time, but really, in reality, it's the same as sending each one of these individual vertices on the corner of the cube separately through the rotation, translation, and projection matrix. All right, let me actually try to draw this here. I have a rotation matrix. I have a translation matrix. And then I have a projection matrix. I'll actually draw a little lower, and you'll see why soon. We send each one of these vertices through the rotation matrix first, then the translation, then the projection, and out pops our 2D cube, which the hardware then further uses those positions to rasterize, draw the cube, turn it in. We've turned our cube into a two-dimensional coordinates with some depth for the depth test. So I guess it's really 3D, but 2D for the 2D screen coordinates. And we render that cube. And then using that same color buffer without clearing it, you've seen the red triangles move across the screen and how we can render to the color buffer multiple times. I want to hit this cube with a different rotation, a different translation. We'll use the same projection. We don't have to use the same projection, but we do simply because we want everything to look uniform. So we'll send all these vertices through a different rotation, a different translation, the same projection, and then out will pop another two-dimensional image, which we will render to the color buffer. And that's exactly what's going on here. When I say fix eye to the camera position, we're seeing the exact same cube rendered twice, just with different matrices. Okay, a different matrix for this cube, and a different matrix for this cube. My screen is now a mess with black ink all over it. Let me clear that off. And let's go back to our original code so that we can do this ourselves. Remember when we get the uniform location? I'm actually going to put this up here. Control KF. And we have our full transform matrix. We send that transform down as the uniform. It's uniform over this entire draw elements call. Remember we talked about uniforms and I showed you how we could send a float uniform down to reflect a, a triangle upside down. Same idea here. We're just using a different matrix instead of a float to do the reflection. So we send that uniform matrix down, draw elements. And then actually I'm gonna, to make this more readable, I'm going to put this full transform up here. And then I'll say full transform matrix gets that. And then this is our first cube. All this has to do with rendering the first cube. And then the second cube, actually, let's grab a snippet of our arguments for later reference. Let's grab that much and bring this down. Minimize this again. And so for the first cube, our rotation, let's see if I can get this so it's a little more viewable. Okay, our rotation is 36 degrees. So 36, we need to put a 36 there. And then the translation is negative 1 on the x, negative 3 on the z. So, negative 1 on the x, and then negative 3 on the z. That will be our first cube. We draw. We send the uniform down, and then we draw. Then we need to do essentially the exact same thing for the second cube. But I said the projection matrix will be the same for both cubes, so I'm going to put the projection matrix down there. We'll just say cube 1 right here. And then I'm holding down control and hitting the down arrow to scroll. 
cube 2 will essentially be the exact same thing. Look at me copy and paste like I'm a real programmer. Uh, it'll be the exact same thing. I guess we don't need to redefine these though. But with different arguments down here. So the arguments for the second cube. The rotation will be 126 around the y-axis. And the translation is 1 on the x, negative 3.75 on the Z. So translation matrix will be 1, negative 3.75, and then we got 126 of rotation. Rotation matrix 1, 26, but that's around the Y axis, not the X axis. And then we'll just say full transform is now our same old projection matrix, but we have this new translation matrix, a new rotation matrix. Put all them together, send that down to the graphics card, and then draw elements. Draw, draw that cube again. Draw that exact same geometry. We're not doing our trib pointers anymore, or new trib pointer calls. We're drawing the exact same geometry, just with a different model view transformation matrix. That's nice. I just send out a new matrix. And I should get a new cube. Let's control the five to see if the scene that renders is similar to what we had. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Let me bring up our version. Yep. Yep, that's looking pretty good. The aspect ratio. You know, remember the aspect ratio in our original code. I said let's use the actual width of the window over the height of the window so we get something that looks sane. And I guessed on this one, but that's not a bad guess, actually. Okay, you see me messing around with the aspect ratio here. But anyway, there you go. So we've rendered the same geometry twice, and we didn't have to send it down to the graphics card twice. Doing so would be useless, and we call this instancing.